Hello, welcome back. Today we have a little bit of a different video. We have a bunch of books here that I want to introduce to you guys. These are my babies. My <laughs> This is my first ever book haul, so yeah, bear with me, please. And let's get started. So I divided the book haul into categories and we're gonna start with summer reads because it's the summer, I think people are looking for summery books to read and I do have a few that I'm really excited to talk to you about so let's get started the first book we have here is The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway this is the tragic story of a Cuban fisherman in the Gulf Stream and the giant fish he catches this is a book that I got mostly because I want to read more classics and to own more classics and I was really looking into books about the ocean, about boats and ships and I just thought this would be like a really quick read and it was. I read it in a few hours even though I'm a slow reader. I bought this secondhand, so a bunch of these books were secondhand buys because as long as a book is in good condition, I don't mind getting it secondhand. The pages are kind of yellow and I really like it. So yeah, that's the first book. Foster by Claire Keegan On a hot summer in rural Ireland, a child is taken by her father to live with relatives on a farm, not knowing when or if she will be brought home again. I first heard of this book from Jack Edwards and he said I think it was the only five star he's given so far this year and I was really intrigued but what made me really buy it was the fact that this is an Irish author and I really love Ireland. I studied Irish literature in college and yeah I really love it so I just wanted to see what the buzz was all about because I know this author is really famous for small things like this which I haven't read yet but I wanted to have this book be my first introduction to her because it's short and a quick read and it's also set in the summer Okay, so next we have Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. This is the story of a boy who wouldn't grow up and the girl he promised to always remember. Peter Pan has pirates, so I thought this is a summer book, right? You read about pirates in the summer, usually. I actually haven't read this one yet. I did read Peter Pan when I was really young, but it wasn't the original version, it was the version for children. Yeah, I'm really excited to get into this one. It also has illustrations, which I really love. I also bought this book secondhand, but like you really can't tell because it's in pristine condition. And so when I opened it and I saw that it had illustrations, I was just really happy and I don't know, I felt really lucky that I was able to pick this up because I wasn't expecting it to be so pretty and in such good condition. Next I have The Talented Mr. Ripley by Patricia Highsmith. A product of a broken home, Tom Ripley becomes enamored of the moneyed world of his new friend. This fondness turns obsessive when Ripley is sent to Italy to bring back his libertine pal. This was kind of an impulse buy. Um, this was suggested by a booktuber that I just started following recently. And I don't really remember her name, but I, I will put her here on the screen. When I saw that this was set in Italy and like we discover with the sea and the man on the beach, like I was just, I was sold. I'm really excited to get into this book. Not only is it a classic and a really well-known story, which I have not read yet, but it also sounds like really summery, like I would read this book at the beach or by the river, so yeah, I'm really excited for this one. So the next book that we have is Outline by Rachel Cusk. A woman writer goes to Athens in the height of summer to teach a writing course. Though her own circumstances remain indistinct, she becomes the audience to a chain of narratives as the people she meets tell her one after the other the stories of their lives. I've seen this book around a few times. I'm not sure when I was first introduced to it, 
but I just love the cover so much like this was a hundred percent a cover buy but I've also read and heard really good things about it so I was really interested in it from the get-go and I think this doesn't follow a um, typical story structure I think this is mostly made up of dialogues I'm not sure I could be wrong but yeah I've been really into reading less typical books lately and I can't wait to get into this one like I will definitely read this one at the beach and take you guys with me <laughs> it's so pretty oh my god okay so before we move on to the next one I wasn't sure if I was gonna mention a book that I have ordered but it hasn't arrived yet but I really want to mention it because it's one of my favorite books of all time and I really want to recommend it to you guys so that book is The Seas by Samantha Hunt. Moored in a coastal fishing town, surrounded by water and beckoned by the sea, an unnamed narrator clings to what her father once told her, that she is a mermaid. True to myth, she finds herself in hard love with a landbound man, an Iraq war veteran 13 years her senior. The mesmerizing, fevered coming-of-age tale that follows will land her in jail. Her otherworldly escape will become the stuff of legend. Samantha Hunt has become one of my favorite authors of all time just from this single book. It's so good. If you're looking for a mermaid core story with magical realism and uh, just a lot of vibes, this is the one. This is the book for you. Yeah, I just wanted to mention that one before we move on to the last summer read. I'm Afraid to Leave by Fernando Pessoa After all, the best way to travel is by feeling. This one is a bit hard to talk about because I'm not sure if there's an English version of this specific book. I know the stories and the poems within this book are translated into English in other editions, but I'm not sure if this particular compilation is translated into English. But I really wanted to talk to you about this author and about this book in particular because it's just so, so good and it's perfect for the summer. So this author is Fernando Pessoa. He's a Portuguese author. I'm Portuguese. I live in Portugal. And I really like to read in Portuguese as well as in English. So I really wanted to talk to you about this book, especially because I wanted to tell you something about the title. So the title is Tenho Medo de Partir, which can be translated into different things in English. So it could be translated into I'm afraid to leave or I'm afraid to break or I'm afraid to die. Like it has all of those translations just within this title which I thought was like so poetic first of all and uh, also just this author the way he weaves words is like nothing you have ever read before <laughs> I think if you are into literary fiction and into really beautiful writing you will definitely enjoy Fernando Pessoa and this particular book is about traveling and in the summer, if we are lucky, we go on holidays, we go on vacation. So this is a perfect book to read during that time, I feel like. And I've been reading it really slowly. I haven't finished it yet, but like every time I read even just a page in this book, I have to stop and think about it or like just stop and feel it. And I read it really, really slowly. I just read this book so slowly that's like... I definitely don't recommend that you read this in one go. I don't think that's how it's meant to be enjoyed. Uh, just, you know, read it slowly throughout summer. And uh, I think it will just make your summer feel like magic. Like, that's how I've been feeling recently as I've been reading this book. Okay, so now we move on to the contemporary slash romance books. And... When I say romance, I don't mean the typical rom-com books that we see a lot of during summertime, especially. It's not that genre. It's more like literary 
fiction with romance. I definitely lean towards books that have romance but are not romance. Uh, unless it's an audiobook. I love rom-com audiobooks. I just don't like them as much as physical reads. But I went on a tangent there. Exciting Times by Nasia Dolan When Ava leaves Ireland age 22 to make her own money, she's not sure what to call it, but it involves money, love, cynicism, unspoken feelings and unlikely connections. Exciting Times in Sue and I also got this second hand. I got it again because it's Irish literature and also it was blurbed by one of my favorite romance authors which is David Nichols and also in the back it says meet the new Sally Rooney so I thought okay this is right up my alley but I haven't finished it yet I'm still reading it but so far, like the first thing I annotated in this book was something that I didn't like about it. And that's never happened to me before. This was a first. The book is getting better, I'll give it that, but it's just not my favorite style of writing. And also the protagonist keeps contradicting herself. And I feel like she's meant to represent Gen Z, the struggles of our generation. I'm not sure if I'm Gen Z or Millennium because I was born in 1997 and some people say that's Gen Z, some people say that's Millennium, Millennial. But I just, so far, I'm not relating to this character at all. I really feel like there's a generational gap between me and this character because I just, I don't understand some of her actions, some of her way of thinking. She's too obsessive and... Uh, she makes too many assumptions, but yeah, this is this is not a book review, but even though I hold this book, I feel like I'm gonna have to unhaul it soon. So, <laughs> we'll see. That's the first I wanted to get out of the way. Writers and Lovers by Lily King At 31, Casey is still clutching onto something nearly all her old friends have let go of. The determination to live a creative life. Whenever I hear about a book that's about a writer and about being a writer, about struggling to be published and with your life until you get that book deal, I feel like whenever I hear a book about that, I'm just gonna buy it, even though this is <laughs> the first book like that that I buy. But uh, it was a success and um, I'm not really sure what to say about it. I don't want this to be like a... <laughs> book review or anything like that or a recommendation video but yes that's the reason why I got it and I got this one for my birthday okay then we have normal people by Sally Rooney at school Connell and Marianne pretend not to know each other but when Connell comes to pick his mother up from her housekeeping job at Marianne's house a strange and indelible connection grows between the two teenagers this is one of my favorite contemporary novels. This one I got it second hand and I am pretty happy with the condition it's in. So yeah, I just got it because I absolutely had to own this book. It's one of my all-time favorites. I needed to have it. One Day by David Nichols. It's 1988 and Dexter Mayhew and Emma Morley have only just met. But after only one day together, they cannot stop thinking about one another. Over 20 years, snapshots of that relationship are revealed on the same day, July 15th of each year. My all-time favorite contemporary romance book like this. Oh, this book is like... <laughs> this book has my heart, my soul. Okay, sorry, um, card full. So I bought this book with the movie cover and that was on purpose because I was introduced to this story through the movie one day and it's also one of my favorite movies of all time and I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. And I just think like, I usually don't like movie covers on the books and yeah, I don't usually buy them 
like that. But this is the one exception because this is the most beautiful cover of this book, first of all, compared to the <laughs> to the other covers. But also, like from all of my books, this is one of the most beautiful books that I own, in my opinion. It's just so... It's so beautiful, like I'm in love with this story, I'm in love with these characters, I'm in love with this cover. <laughs> I also love, like, look how floppy it is. I love it. Okay, so now we move on to the thriller slash mystery books that I have to show you guys. And the first one is The Last House on Needless Street by Katriona Ward. This is a story of a serial killer, a stolen child, revenge, death, and an ordinary house at the end of an ordinary street. All these things are true, and yet they are all lies. I bought this book for two reasons. First, the cover. I love every single cover of this book, so it was really hard to choose. I ended up getting this one because it was the one that they had at the second-hand shop. And the other reason why I bought it was because of the talking cat. So if you don't know, this has a talking cat, but you probably do know because this book is very popular, or it was last fall at least. Uh, but I really love this story, so I would definitely recommend and I will definitely reread it. Then we have The Appeal by Janice Hallett. In the run up to a murder trial, two young lawyers sift through the material emails, letters, messages with a growing suspicion that the killer may be hiding in plain sight. So I bought this book because I wanted to read a mixed media book. This is my introduction to mixed media. I liked it. It was, you know, really interesting. But maybe because it's mixed media, the writing style just didn't do much for me. So that kind of ruined the experience a little bit for me. But I think it's an interesting concept and I got... And I'll show you the next one. And I got um, The Twyford Code as well by Janice Hallett. 40 years ago, Stephen Smith found a copy of a famous children's book, its margins full of strange markings and annotations. He took it to his remedial English teacher, Miss Isles, who became convinced it was the key to solving a puzzle. Then, Miss Isles disappeared on a class field trip and Stephen's memory won't allow him to remember what happened. Now, out of prison after a long stretch, Stephen decides to investigate the mystery that has haunted him for decades. This one I haven't read yet, but yeah, I got them because they were different. And as I said before, I want to read more uh, atypical stories. So yeah, if I like the Twyford Code, I'm sure I'm gonna get the next book by this author, which is... I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll put it here. I need to change the card, so I'll be right back. We're gonna move on to the early fall books, both ones that I've already read and ones that I really want to read in the early fall or fall. First, we have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Safon. Hidden in the heart of the old city of Barcelona, in the cemetery of lost books, a labyrinthine library of obscure and forgotten titles that have long gone out of print. To this library, a man brings his 10-year-old son, Daniel, one cold morning in 1945. Daniel is allowed to choose one book from the shelves and pulls out The Shadow of the Wind by Julian Carex. Actually, I've already read this book, but the ones that I'm actually hauling, they are like here, these two. Uh, it's number two and number three in the series. I didn't want to remove them from there because it's too much trouble. But this is the first one, so I really recommend this series. 
It has mystery, it has dark academia vibes, it's Barcelona, so it's very atmospheric and um, it's about books. It's a book about books. So yeah, I think it, this is just perfect to read in September, October, even November. Yeah, I really love this series and I'm really excited to continue reading it. All right, next we have The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Nobody Owens, known to his friends as Bod, is a normal boy. He would be completely normal if he didn't live in a graveyard, being raised and educated by ghosts. This is the only middle grade, aside from Peter Pan, that I am hauling today. I'm really excited to read it. I'm gonna start reading it in the fall because I think that's the best time. And I got this edition because it has illustrations, which I really love in middle grade books. All right, next we have one that I'm extremely, extremely excited about, and that's Once Upon a River by Diane Satterfield. On a dark midwinter night in an ancient inn on the River Thames, an extraordinary event takes place. The regulars are telling stories to while away the dark hours when the door bursts open on a grievously wounded stranger. In his arms is the lifeless body of a small child. Hours later, the girl stirs, takes a breath and returns to life. Is it a miracle? Is it magic? Or can science provide an explanation? These questions have many answers, some of them quite dark indeed. This one I started reading digitally, but once I started, I just had to read it in physical copy. And so I waited years and years and years <laughs> until I finally got a copy for myself. So I'm going to continue reading this in the fall, probably in September, because I can't wait. I can't wait very long to read this book. And this book, like the writing is just magical. It's so beautiful. Like if you love storytelling, I feel like you're gonna love the writing in this book. Yeah, I just can't wait to read it and tell you all about it. <laughs> also, it's so big. I, like I wasn't expecting it to be this thick and I'm here for it. <laughs> uh, mm, it smells so good. The General Theory of Forgetfulness by José Eduardo Agualusa. On the eve of Angolan independence, an agoraphobic woman breaks herself into her apartment for 30 years, leaving off vegetables and the pigeons she lures in with diamonds, burning her furniture and books to stay alive and writing her story on the apartment's walls. The next book that I have is a book written in Portuguese, even though the author is not Portuguese, I think. Um, he's from Angola, but he did live in Lisbon. I got this book because of the cover. Like, look at this cover. Like, it's so beautiful. And this one, they do have an English translation and an English edition, if you're interested. I have never read from this author, so I can't say anything about his writing, but he's won awards. He's won the Premio Literario Fernando Namora. He was a finalist for the Man Booker International. And he won the International Dublin Literary Award in 2017. So yeah, because it's in Portuguese, I feel like I'm gonna love it because the Portuguese language is very, very beautiful. <laughs> I speak as a Portuguese person, like I didn't always think this, but right now I think the Portuguese language is really beautiful. And I just, I want to read more Portuguese literature and literature written in Portuguese, even if it's not Portuguese from Portugal, because it's usually so beautiful, like the writing. I love beautiful writing, like I prefer beautiful writing over plot, and that's something I've been finding out about myself recently. And yeah, I just hope that his writing is something like that. All right, finally, last but not least, we have the general fiction books, uh, which I couldn't put in any category. And the first one is Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. 
Guy Montag is a fireman. In his world, where television rules and literature is on the brink of extinction, firemen start fires rather than put them out. His job is to destroy the most illegal of commodities, the printed book, along with the houses in which they are hidden. Ray Bradbury is also one of my favorite authors of all time, but I've only read his short stories, so I know I love his writing because of his short stories, but I've never read a novel from him and this is the first one I'm going to read. So yeah, I have this here because I've already divided it into days, like how much I'm gonna read in one day, because I'm gonna read this very soon. Lonely Castle in the Mirror by... Mizuki Tsuchimura Seven students are avoiding going to school, hiding in their darkened rooms, unable to face their family and friends, until the moment they discover a portal into another world that offers temporary escape from their stressful lives. One that I thought I would really love, but I've started and I'm not loving it. <laughs> I heard really good things about this book and I know there's a plot twist around the end which people seem to really like so I'm gonna push through this book but the writing is just really not for me I'm not enjoying it at all I don't know if it's because it's a translated work I don't know, it just, uh, it just sounds awkward to me and not very well written it sounds kind of like fanfic um, but yeah, I'm gonna push through and if I don't like it, then I'll have to unhaul it unfortunately, because this one I bought it new I really thought I was gonna want it in my bookshelf but I'm not so sure anymore and last but not least ta-da! When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro England, 1930s. Christopher Banks has become the country's most celebrated detective. His case is the talk of London society. Yet, one unsolved crime has always haunted him. The mysterious disappearance of his parents in old Shanghai. So this is my first ever Kazuo Ishiguro and I don't think it's gonna be my last, but I when I started this book, I found it really hard to get into the writing because I don't remember what I was reading before, but I just felt that clash. And I didn't like it. I haven't finished this book, like I'm, you know, I have this much left. But Bobo, Bobo is scratching. I bought this book because of Emmy from her channel Amy. This is, I think this is one of her favorite books of all time or one of her favorite books of last year or something like that. And I was really hoping to love it. Like, I don't dislike it so far, but it's just not wowing me. But I do know this also has a plot twist or, yeah, I think the, which like this is, I hope this is not a spoiler. To me, it kind of felt like a spoiler, so maybe I will just cut it from the video. But I haven't gotten to that part yet, so... Yeah, I'm gonna keep reading it, especially because I also want to read Never Let Me Go. I'm really intrigued by that story. And I just really want to like this author. I really want to like him. Also, these covers like are some of the most beautiful covers I've seen. Like The whole collection is gorgeous, stunning wow so yeah i'm not giving up on this author yet all right so those are all of the books that i have to show you guys some of them will stay in my bookshelf and in my book collection and some of them will leave but i really wanted to take you through this journey and i hope you found some interesting books that you would like to read or maybe our tastes match. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in more bookish videos. Bye!